Hello. Good evening. Uh, good evening. <laughs> good early morning, everybody. Uh, goodness. Every time I do this, it's tough. Good. Good morning, everyone. From good morning, early morning, good midnight from the Philippines. If everyone is not from the Philippines, wherever you are, good evening or good afternoon. So, um, I will be reading chapters 13 to 18 right now. And yeah, I'm just gonna do a quick recap of the name of the dragons. We'll be reading Wings of Fire. So, yep, we're going to do a quick recap. So, here we are. To do, we're gonna go to the next scene. Okay, let me do a quick recap, okay? Okay. Let's see. Where is my images here? <laughs> I'm so lost. Okay. So this is the uh, book fold, book cover. Hello, Sarah. Welcome to the stream. Welcome, welcome. I'll give you an SO. How are you doing, Sarah? Good evening. Okay, so this is this is the book that I actually bought from Fully Book. It's a quick recap. The, um, this the, the book's name is Wings of Fire, and uh, wait, lang the back ako. But yes, anyways, this is um Wings of Fire, and I will do a re quick recap of the dragons we have so far. For those who did, for those who missed, um the previous chapters all of um, my readings from 1 to 6 and uh, 7 to 12 it's all in the YouTube all of those um, vaults are there so first off we have the sand wings so the sand wings description pale gold or white scales the color of desert sand Poisonous barbed tail, fruit black tongues. Hello, Reeker. Welcome to the stream. Abilities can survive a long time without water. Poison enemies with the tips of their tails, like scorpions, bury themselves for camouflage in the desert sand, breathe fire. Queen. Since the death of Queen Oasis, the tribe is split between three rivals for the throne. Sisters. Uh, sisters burn, blister and blaze. Alliances burn fights alongside sky wings and mud wings. Blister is allied with the sea wings and blaze has the support of most sand wings, as well as an alliance with the ice wings. How are you, Reeker? How's everybody here? Next off, we have the mud wings. We have the mud wings. Description. Thick, armored, brown scales sometimes with amber and gold. Underscales, large, flat heads with nostrils on top of the snout. Abilities, can breathe fire if warm, if warm enough. Hold their breath for up to an hour, blend into large mud puddles, usually very strong. Queen, Queen Morhen. Alliances, Currently allied with Burn and the Sky Wings in the Great War. And then we have We have the Sky Wings. We have the Sky Wings. Description Red, Gold, or Orange skills. And Armus Wings abilities. Powerful fights. Ah, sorry. Powerful fighters. And flyers can breathe fire. Queen, Queen Scarlet. Alliances currently allied with Burn and the Mud Wings in the Great War. Next, we have the Sea Wings. 
the sea wings, description, blue or green or aquamarine scales, webs between their claws, gills on their necks, glow in the dark stripes on their tail, slash snouts, slash under bellies. Abilities can breathe underwater, see in the dark, create huge waves with one splash of their powerful tails. Excellent swimmers. Queen, Queen Coral. Alliances, currently allied with Blister in the Great War. Next, we have the Ice Wings. Wait. Next, we have the Ice Wings. We have the Ice Wings. Description. Silvery scales like the moon or pale blue like ice. Rigid claws to grip the ice. Forked blue tongues. Tails narrow to a whip thin end. Abilities. Can withstand, can withstand sub-zero temperatures and bright light. Exhale a deadly freezing breath. Queen. Queen Glacier. Alliances. Currently allied with Blaze and most of the Sandwings in the Great War. Next, we have the Rain Wings. Rain Wings. Description. Scales constantly shift colors, usually bright like birds of paradise, prehensile tails. Abilities. Can camouflage their scales to blend into their surroundings. Use their prehensile tails for climbing. No known natural weapons. Queen, Queen Dazzling. Alliances, not involved in the Great War. And then lastly, we have the Rain Wings. Oh, sorry. Oopsies. We have the Night Wings. Night Wings. Description, purplish black scales and scattered silver scales on the underside of their wings like a night sky full of stars for black tongues abilities can breathe fire disappear into dark shadows read minds foretell the future queen a closely guarded secret alliances too mysterious and powerful to be part of the war okay so, um, okay, I'm also going to do a quick recap of the Dragonet prophecy. Might as well read it. When the war has lasted 20 years, the Dragonets will come. When the land is soaked in blood and tears, the Dragonets will come. Find the sea wing egg of deepest blue. Wings of night shall come to you. The largest egg in mountain high will give to you the wings of sky. For wings of earth, search through the mud for an egg the color of dragon blood. And hidden alone from the rival queens, the sandwing egg awaits unseen. Of three queens who blister and blaze and burn, two shall die and one shall learn. If she bows to a fate that is stronger and higher, she'll have the power of wings of fire. Five eggs to hatch on brightest night, five dragons born to end the fight. Dark darkness will rise to bring the light. The dragonets are coming. Okay. So I'll be reading chapter 13 right now. Okay. That's who was following us. Starfight thought with a jolt of shock as eight night wings came through the door, breathing flames in all directions. He saw the tables and the map catch fire, and he saw flames engulf the orange dragon, and then he felt talons seize his tail and he was dragged out the door into the pounding rain outside. Flame Viper, Ochre, and Squid were tossed on top of him, howling. By the time Starflight struggled free and looked up, the door of the outpost was ablaze. Inside the cave, fire raged from wall to wall. Skywings were shrieking in agony. A troop of black dragons blocked the way out. 
killing any soldier who tried to escape. No! Starflight yelled. I promised them. I promised them. He flung himself at the back of the nearest Nightwing. But the dragon shrugged him off easily. You can't kill them! Starflight hadn't wanted to be taken prisoner, but these soldiers were just ordinary dragons, following the queen and doing their jobs. They wanted peace as much as he did. They didn't deserve to die like this. Morosir! Starflight cried. Stop them! You are peculiar! Morosir said from the shadows right beside him. Starflight jumped. There are only a handful of Skywings! Why would you care? Can you spare them? Starflight said desperately. Please, let them live. It's much too late for that, said Morosir. Starflight turned to face the flames and realized that this, has, this had been Morosir's plan all along. That's why he'd chosen a remote location with a limited number of dragons. That's why he didn't care if the soldiers questioned Squid's presence. It was all part of the test. But whether the dragonets passed or failed, he'd planned to kill all the Skywings no matter what. To erase any evidence that we were here by murdering any witnesses who might wreck our story, he stared hopelessly into the fire, certain that he'd be hearing dragons screaming in his dreams for the rest of his life. They nearly killed me, Squid shouted at Morosir. Just like I said they would. I quit. I don't want to be in the prophecy anymore. There's no treasure and it's boring and stupid and I'm hungry and I hate your island and I want to go home. Fine. Morosir snarled coldly at him. I've never met a dragonet more pointless than you. Go sniveling back to the Towers of Peace. See if you can find them by yourself. I hope you die on the way. He shoved Squid forcefully in the chest. Get out of here! Go! Squid stumbled back, sleeping on the wet rocks. It took him a moment before he could talk. By myself? He squeaked. But... But you wouldn't... My dad is the leader of the Talons. You have to be nice to me. You can't send me off. I certainly can. Morris here hissed. Lightning flashed in the sky above him, illuminating the dark mountains looming over them all. Leave, or I will kill you. I never want to see you again. Three moons, Starflight thought. He really hates Squid. Wait. Fate speaker said. Reaching towards the sea wing, Moro's here, wait! He's one of us! We can't lose him! Squid grabbed her front talons and squeezed, squeezed, looking desperate. We have another one, Moro's here said. We just have to retrieve her from the rainforest. But she's clearly made an impression on any dragons who'd who've run into her, so we're struck, so we're stuck with her. Whereas this one is nothing but useless. It's not fair, Squid whined. It's not my fault some other sea wing is better than me. That's true, Starfight thought, feeling an unexpected stab of pity for the sniveling green dragonette. No one could live up to Tsunami. You can't do this, Fate Speaker cried. Flame! Viper! Kill him! Viper shrugged, and Flame hunched his wings. His eyes were fixed on the cave where his fellow sky wings were burning. He said he doesn't want to be in the prophecy anyway, Ochre said to Fate's speaker. I didn't mean it, Squid cried. Morris here whipped his tail around and smacked Squid hard over the head. Leave! Now! Be grateful I'm not killing you instead! Whimpering, Squid backed away, spread his wings, and lift, lifted into the storm-soaked sky. Starflight watched him flap slowly toward the cross of the clouds' mountains. A sea wing alone in Skywing territory, Squid wouldn't last a day. 
Starflight's head pounded and he felt nauseous. Every time he thought he'd seen the worst of Moros here and the Nightwings, they did something even more horrible. Faith's speaker was crying, tears and raindrops together soaking her face. She pressed her talons to her eyes as if she, she wished she could claw them out. Starflight put one of his wings around her and she leaned into his shoulder shaking. Maybe he'll be alright, he whispered. Sometimes dragons surprise you. Don't get comfortable, Moros here said to Starflight. You are running out of chances to show me you can obey orders. Starflight wound his tail Starflight wound his tail around Fate Speakers, thinking, Why should I have to? Who decided you to, to or, who decided you get to order me around? He realized he didn't even care if Moros here read his mind. And he stared at the big dragon, waiting for a reaction. Morosir looked away first. Back to the island, he ordered. The others will clean up this mess. He flicked his tail at the, at the ruined guardhouse, then leaped into the sky. Great speaker turned toward the mountains as if she was thinking about going after Squid. Starflight wished. He was that kind of dragon. Would he disobey Morosir and chase after one of his friends? If this had happened to them, he thought he would for Sunny. He would never let her fly away alone into death. He thought perhaps he could be brave for her if he ever needed to be. Not brave enough to escape right now, though, he realized. But maybe they're coming to rescue me. Maybe I should wait for them anyway. Or maybe I'm looking for excuses to do nothing. Come on, before anything worse happens, he said gently to Faith Speaker. She wiped her eyes and followed him into the rain-soaked sky. The flight back to the island was even more exhausting than the flight out. And the storm was relentless the entire way. Starflight's whole body felt numb by the time they touched down in the Nightwing Fortress. None of the Dragonets spoke as they trudged back to the dormitory behind Morosir. Training at dawn tomorrow, Morosir said, stopping at the doorway. The room was empty, the other Nightwing Dragonets were nowhere to be seen. He eyed Starflight and Fate Speaker, then turned to go. So, nothing to eat? Ogre ventured in a in a in a woe begun voice. It had now been days since Starflight's last meal. Tiring. Energy sucking days. But he didn't think he had the strength to eat anything tonight anyway. He just wanted to close his eyes and try to forget the sad, dripping shape of squid flapping away into the mountains. No. Morosir rumbled, and then he was gone. Ochre sighed pitifully. Viper hissed and muched to the sleeping hollow she'd chosen, burying herself immediately in a thick canvas blanket. Flame lashed his tail for a moment, studying the room. Not much better than last night's dungeon, he muttered. He and Ochre found spots beside Viper at the far end of the room, and soon the mudwing was snoring. But the Skywing Dragonet sat and stared into the coals unmoving. Starflight was half asleep already, but the minute he curled onto his bed, Fate Speaker hopped up beside him. Mmm, Starflight objected sleepily. I know what we have to do, she whispered. We have to talk to the Queen. We? Starflight asked. You and me? Without Moros here. Maybe she has no idea how awful he is. I bet he's lying about her ordering him to kill one of us. I bet he came up with that himself. Starflight crawled his tail, feeling uneasy. He wondered how involved Queen Battle Winner was in decisions about the Dragonets and the prophecy. Had she ordered their trip to the mainland and the deaths of those Skywings? I bet! 
fits because I refuse me. That you won't be too happy with Morris here for sending Squid away. Maybe she trusts him, Starfleet pointed out. Maybe she lets him do what he wants without direct orders. In which case, we could get in really big trouble for going behind his back. Or maybe she has no idea what he's up to, Fate Speaker pointed out. And maybe if we talk to her, she'll let us both live. Free the rain wings, stop the experiments, and let the prophecy happen however it's supposed to without Morrow's here ruining everyone's lives. Starfleet tilted his head at her. That's a lot of hope piled onto a very slim possibility. It's worth a try, she insisted. He thought for a moment. His brain felt sluggish and confused. He needed real food and he needed sleep and he really needed his friends. Maybe we can ask for a private audience tomorrow, he suggested. No, Fate Speaker said. Morris here won't allow it. We have to go find ourselves. She doesn't want to be found, Starfight pointed out. Maybe she keeps herself hidden for a reason. He hadn't come up with any good theories about that yet. Right, and maybe we need to know what the reason is, Fate Speaker said. She had a point. More knowledge would make them more powerful. If they found out something they could use... Alright, he said with a sigh. We'll go look for her. Face Speaker shook out her shook out her wings and smiled at him. Tonight, she said. Tonight? Stafford covered his head with his aching wings. Don't make me leave this bed before dawn, please. This is important stuff, right? Sleep now and I'll wake you later. Deal? He said again. Deal. He felt her top of the He felt her hop of the bed. Listening to her footsteps, patted away, his tired brain began spinning in hypothetical circles. Why is the queen's secret? What is the queen's secret? Why doesn't she let herself be seen? He thought of Queen Glacier and how she kept her sad wing ally, Blaze, cozily confined in a fortress built just for her, under instructions never to leave or do anything risky. What if Queen Battle Winner is being controlled by someone like Blaze is? What if staying hidden isn't her own choice? <sniffs> if something was wrong? If he could help Battle Winner, maybe she could help him in return. Stop thinking and sleep, he told himself. He could see the thin thread of smoke from where Flame sat, hunched and brooding just like he was. But despite the exhaustion that seemed to weigh down everybody in his body, sleep was a long time coming for them both. Hmm. Chapter 14 Starfleet was surrounded by scrolls, stacks of scrolls, walls of scrolls, as high ten dragons, scrolls as far as he could see in every direction. His intense joy, so much to read. Surely everything he could wish for had to be in here. All the answers to all his questions, warred with deep, paralyzing anxiety. How would he ever learn all this? How could he possibly get through it all before the test? What was a test? Something about wings of fire. There had to be a scroll on wings of fire in here. Whoops, said the voice from the next aisle as a pile of scrolls went tumbling, scattering all around. Starfleet talons. Clay's face poked out of the wreckage and he grinned at Starfleet. Oh hey, there you are. Clay, be careful, Starfight said. He started picking up scrolls and restocking them as neatly as he could. We need all this. Do we? Clay wrinkled his snout. Does the prophecy say a bunch of scrolls are coming to save the day? Funny, I don't remember that part. Starfight gave him a look and picked up the next scroll. How to free the Rainwing prisoners? 
See? He said, waving only to find it completely black inside. Smooth, empty, punch meant stared at back at him indefinite to his disappointment. Come on outside, Jay said. We could use your help. I can't. I have to read all of this first. Starflight started to spread his wings, knocked over another stack of scrolls, and turned in an agitated circle. <laughs> Had the walls of scrolls gotten, strong, gotten taller, he picked up another scroll, Secrets of the Nightwings. That's what I need, he muttered, rolling it open, but it was blank too. Claire was still waiting. I can't help you until I know everything, Starflight told him. I should stay here. It won't take long. Soon I'll know a lot more than I do. But I can't go out there yet. He pulled a shimmering golden scroll out of a pile. Surely something so beautiful had to have something to useful in it. <laughs> How to tell Sunny that we love her? Starfleet sighed. He knew before he unrolled it. Blank, blank, blank. Starfleet, Jay said. Starfleet, come on, hurry! Starfest, he's going somewhere, come on! It wasn't Clay's voice anymore, and someone was shaking his shoulder. Shocking? Uh, someone was shaking his shoulder, and Starfest blinked awake, middled, muddled, and still sleepy. Come on! Fate speaker whispered again. Flame just snuck out. Let's follow him quick. Uh. Wait, I need to self-redeem. I need to drink first. But All this reading is making my saliva dry. Continue. Let's continue. Why? Starfet mumbled, rubbing his eyes. You won't know where the queen is. Oh, hello, wolf! My parrot song! Wow, mukang marami kang iinam kira. Ah, honor. Let me give you a shout out, wolf. How is my chaotic MLV tuber? Hello Wolf, welcome to the stream. Hello, hello. Yes, I need to drink so much water because reading this book is very tiring. <laughs> yes, sir. The faint speaker was already hurrying to the doorway. He stretched, knowing he definitely had not gotten enough sleep and followed her. Flame's red tail was just disappearing around the corner at the far end of the hallway. Fate Speaker and Starfight scurried quietly after him. She didn't speak, so he kept silent as well. Oh, also, while me reading this book, the purpose of this reading, the purpose of this reading stream is to make you guys sleepy. So, yeah. If you guys can't afford an audiobook or you know those audibles thing magic, this is a purpose. I am here to read a book for you. So yeah. Where am I? Fate speaker and Starflight scurried quietly after him. She didn't speak, so he kept silent as well. His dream had left him feeling disturbed. Like he'd forgotten something really important. Someone he had to warn. 
Soon, Flame found a long staircase that that, that wound that wound down and down and down through the fortress, each level darker than the last, despite the colds glow, glowing in the walls. He stopped a few times, listening, and Fate Speaker and Starfight stopped too, ducking their heads and letting the shadows envelop their black scales. Finally, they reached the bottom of the staircase and Flame chose one of the tunnels, which seemed to lead directly into the rock of the volcano. He paused beneath their claws. Starfed paused to touch the walls, worried that he was feeling rumbles of movement from deep within the earth. And then they came to the first cage. It was empty, but Starfed could guess what the bars and the shackles were for. This was the Nightwing dungeon, where Flame and Ochre had been imprisoned overnight. Most of the cages were empty, but in the fourth one was a skeletal, drab, gray rainwing fast asleep. Fate Speaker and Starflight paused outside her cage, looking in. Starflight wondered why this rainwing was kept separate from the others in the caves outside. What are you doing here? Flame's accusing face appeared from the shadows making Starfleet jump. Following you? Fate Speaker said busily. What in three months are you up to? None of your business. Flame snapped. Go away. What if a guard catches you down here? Starfleet pointed out. You'll be in much more trouble as a Skywing alone, prowling the fortress than if you're with the two Nightwings. The red dragonet considered that for a moment, smoke rising from the nostrils. Fine, he said ungraciously. Do whatever you want. I don't care. He turned and stumped away. Fate Speaker and Starflight exchanged a glance and followed him. The last cage in the hallway contained a nightwing. This was where Flame stopped and dropped on the bars with one claw. Not just any nightwing. Deathbringer. The assassins lifted his head and regarded them. His wings rose and fell as he breathed, and the cage seemed too small for him. Hello, Skywing! Glad to see you on the outside of the cages this time. What does it take to become an assassin? Flame blurted. I want to know the best way to kill another dragon fast. Deathbringer stood up and took a step forward the bars. You mean, the best way to kill another dragon and not care? He said. Flame hissed and lashed his tail. You have to be doing it for a really good reason, said Deathbringer. And you have to believe in that reason completely. You also should avoid talking to your targets in case you find out they're beautiful, sarcastic, and fascinating. For instance... Is that what happened to you? Flame asked with a snort. Is that why you're in here? The silver scales under Deathbringer. Uh, oh wait, the silver scales under Deathbringer's wings glittered faintly in torchlight as he shrugged. Perhaps, but it's not a terrible thing to question your orders, if you ask me. Flame flicked his tail and fidgeted with one of his wings. What orders? The speaker asked Flame and Starflight. Who is this? Can't one of your visions tell you that? Flame asked slightly. This is Deathbringer, Starfleet explained. He was sent to kill my friends but instead he let us go and he saved glory from the other Nightwings. Three moons. Keep your voice down, Deathbringer said, looking nervous for the first time. I think I am the only dragon down here. Apart from the Queen's Splendor, but you never know. That's Queen's Splendor? Starfleet asked. The first raid wing captured by the tribe, said Deathbringer. She's the one who accidentally scarred vengeance. The idea was once we had their queen, they'd do whatever we wanted. Little did we know that only do Little did we know that only do they have multiple queens, apparently they can go for months without noticing one is miss missing either. 
Yikes, said Faith Speaker. Doesn't surprise me, Flame said. That's all going to change, Starfight said. Gary will make sure of it. Because of Gary, Deathbringer said. Starfight jumped. Had the other dragon read his mind? They stared at each other for a moment. Yes, Starfight said finally. The look on Deathbringer's face was so obvious, so real and sad. That Starfleet had a weird experience of being able to see what his own expressions must be, be must be every time he thought of suddenly. What's glory? Pittsburgh asked. That's a long story, Starfleet said. I'm going back to bed, Fame growled. A small burst of fire crept out of his snout as he pushed past as he pushed past Fate's speaker. This is pointless. Wait, Deathbringer said. Just remember that you're your own dragon. You don't have to do what you're told. You can at least ask questions. So I can end up like you? Flame snapped. Behind bars soon to be dumped into a pit of lava? That does sound like great advice. Deathbringer shrugged. A ghost of smile crossed his face. It could be worse. Flame snorted again and slithered away up the tunnel. Starfleet watched the flickers of fire around his snout, moving through the shadows past Splendor's cage and back to the stairs. Ooh, it's also making me sleepy. Damn, Kira, wake up. So Glory's alright? Deathbringer said to Starfleet. She made it back? Starfleet nodded, but she's pretty mad about all the imprisoned rainwings. He hesitated, thinking that he really shouldn't trust the Nightwing, no matter how much he'd help them. Of course she is, said Deathbringer with another half smile. I never thought this was a good idea for the record. The niches for the coals down here were rough, hacked out of the jungle rocks, rock walls instead of neatly carved and chiseled like the ones on the upper floors. So the shadows all had sharp edges like talons trying to claw their way out of the stone. The heat was even more than the blazing sun in the kingdom of sand and Starfleet's head was starting to ache. You don't... Um... You don't seem... Fate speaker started then trailed off. Like a typical as... Wait... Like a typical assassin, Deathbringer finished for her. Well, a lot of energy went into training. Went into training me. But then I was sent to the continent and... I guess when you're on your own for a while, you start thinking your own thoughts instead of anyone else's. I'm afraid that makes me quite disappointed to the queen. Fate speaker grabbed the bars. You've met the queen? He tilted his head at her. No, not face to face, of course. She watches her. He watches us through screens and speaks through her daughter. Greatness. It's been like that as long as I've been alive, anyway. Starflight scales prickled. What if the queen had screens like that all over the fortress? What if she was always watching her tribe without any of them? Realizing she was there, he looked around uneasily, thinking that the dungeon shadows could easily hide a few holes in the walls. We need to talk to her, Fritz Speaker said. How can we find her? I spent all night searching the whole moon's begotten fortresses, and I can't figure out where she might be. Oh. You have? Starfight said surprised. While you were sleeping, she said, I told you, I'm wide awake at night. I wanted to get started. I am the same way. Deathbringer said to her, Listen, it's not safe to seek out the queen. She wouldn't like it. We don't have to invade her magical privacy or whatever. Fate speaker said, Does she have a throne room?
By the way, before I continue, is the music background too loud, chat? Is it too loud? Tell me if it's too loud. I don't know if it's too loud though. I don't know if it's too loud, but yeah. Wait, where am I already? Eh? Does she have a throne room? Somewhere we could talk through the wall and probably find her? Deathbringer hesitated. This isn't a good idea. I don't think she'll help you. I think she will. Face speaker said. She pressed her front tiles to her forehead. Dramatically, I saw it in a vision. Deathbringer gave her an extremely odd look. Really? My visions are never wrong. Face speaker said breezily. Although I wish they'd warn me about more useful things sometimes. She glanced down at her claws and started guessing. She was thinking of squid. Well, Deathbringer said slowly, If you really want to try the throne room, it's on the far side of the fortress from here. Two doors past the library if you're coming from the council chamber. But even if she's behind the screen in the middle of the night, which she won't be, she won't speak to you with a greatness there. She doesn't have to speak, Fate Speaker said passionately. She has to listen. Deathbringer met Starflight's eyes and then shrugged again. Well, good luck. But hurry, it'll be dawn soon. How can you tell? Starflight asked. There was no windows in the dungeon. Nothing to mark the passage of time. Nothing but pockmarked black rock surrounded the prisoners. I can sense it. Deathbringer said, Spend a few months sleeping out in the room and you'll get the knack of it too. Wait, I need drink. I need to drink, man. Wait. I need, I need to self hide, hide, hide it again. Good God. Wait, I'm, I'm, I'm actually lost. Wait, where, where did I stop again? Okay, there you go. What were you doing on your own on the continent for so long? Starfleet asked. I had a list, Deathbringer said, and regular meetings to receive new orders. Did you ever notice that whenever one side appeared to be winning the war, one of their top generals would mysteriously die? Not that, I, not that I'm taking credit for anything, of course. I did notice that, Starfleet said. At least from what I could figure out from the newest history scrolls. But if that was you, well, it seemed to happen to all three sides. So I thought it had to be a coincidence. Deathbringer spread his wings. We only chose a side recently. He paused. I was not consulted in that choice. Don't like Mister either, Starflight realized. Starflight, we have to go, Fate Speaker said, tugging on his tail. I want to find a queen tonight, before Morrow's here can do anything else awful. Come on! Starflight stepped back reluctantly. He felt as if he's 
he still had so many questions for Duff Bringer. And this might be the first Nightwing who would actually give him real answers. I'll come back, he promised. Soon, I'll, I'll see what I can do to help you. Don't get in trouble, said Deathbringer. I'll be alright. Good luck. He tipped his wing toward Fate's speaker. Starfleet wished he could do something. He would try to save Deathbringer the way of the Nightwing had saved Glory, both from the assassination and from the prison caves. He should do something brave, something bold and kind and heroic. But he had no idea how to even begin. Instead, he followed Faith Speaker back into the fortress, back through the tunnel's hallways in search of the throne room and a queen who might or might not be there, who might or might not listen, and who almost certainly could not help them. Wait, Wait chat, I'm going to self. Redeem the stretch because I'm getting sleepy as well, Lamau. I'm getting sleepy in my own stream. Wait. Standing up so that I won't fall asleep. Yeah, that's is that okay with you, chat? That okay? Okay. I continue reading. Two doors past the library, Fate Speaker muttered something about a council chamber. She paused. At an intersection, looking down both tunnels and pressing her claws together. I think I remember where the council chamber is, Starfight said. He'd been trying to create a map of the fortress in his head every time they left the dormitory. That way, if I'm right, he pointed. Then we go this way, she said. I think we'll pass the, li the library this way. Library, Starfleet echoed, finally hearing what Deathbringer had said. There's a library! Fate speaker, have you seen it? How many scrolls do they have? Like a million, she said. A million! Starf Starfleet felt momentarily faint, thinking of a million scrolls he'd never read. It would be just like his, his dream. That wasn't a real guess. Fate speaker said, stopping to give him an amused grin. I just meant lots. Really? I didn't try to count them. Oh. Wait. Okay. This is chapter 15 na pala. This is chapter 15. Lots is exciting too. Hello Zane, welcome to the stream, welcome, 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 I'll give you a shout out. Nakas kumalabang, what do you mean? What do you mean by that Zane? Just dropped by will be listening to the story. Oh. Pero also playing TFT. Oh. Zayam. Me and my one brain cell. Okay. Oh. Let me continue reading. Where am I? Who else? Wait, wait, wait. Where is chapter? Oh god, chapter 15. 
Wait, wait, wait. Where's chapter 18? I need to mark the chapter so I won't get lost. Ah, there you go. Okay. Let's continue. <laughs> Grabe siya. Guys, nagdadabog po siya. No way. No way. That's not true. Hindi ako nagdadabog. Zane. How dares you? Bruh. Gods! It's exciting too. Starflight said. He felt a little silly getting so excited over scrolls, but there had never been enough of them under the mountain. He had read the same ones over and over and over again. Something new. Something with more answers. More of the information he needed. That would be very... Uh, that would be everything. Here it is. Great speaker said, pausing at a tall open archway. Starflight peered inside, his heart pounding. The room was cavernous, even bigger than the council chamber. Instead of coals lying open in wall niches, here the light came from fire that was carefully trapped in metal globes and kept away from the scrolls. Square nooks were carved out of the wall all the way up to the ceiling and in each square there were between three and six scrolls neatly enrolled labeled and organized organized with the market next to the square and large scroll rolled out on a main table as a catalog he would see how it worked in the first place and his balance ached to rush inside and start reading you're so cute Fate speaker said, look at your face, like someone just opened up a giant treasure box and it's all for you. That was exactly how Starflight felt, looking at all these scrolls. He took a tentative step inside and Fate, Fate speaker immediately grabbed his tail. Oh no you don't, she said. We find the queen first, you can come back and moon over scrolls tomorrow. If Morris here lets me, Starflight said wistfully. Facebooker dragged him away from the library and stopped two doors in front of a round stone from that was completely empty, with no windows and no furniture, and only one tree for glowing coals. The wall opposite and there was a strange lattice of stone studded with diamond-shaped holes no bigger than ladybugs. I did see this room, Fate Speaker said. I just didn't guess it was a throne room. Shouldn't a throne room have a throne in it? Even no one plans to sit on it? Maybe there's a throne behind the screen, Starflight suggested. Hmm, she said. She still seems like it shouldn't get to be called a throne room then. She stuck up the lattice wall and pressed one eye to one of the holes. Face speaker, Starflight said, shock. We're not supposed to try and look at her. Don't panic, she said. It's all dark back there anyway. She tilted her eyes and tried another hole lower down. Maybe there's something glowing, but it's just look like fire. I can't see the well, I can see the queen. Do you think she's in there? She rapped on the screen. Hello, your majesty. Silence from the ho Silence from the wall. Queen battle winner. Face the girl. Try again. We really need to talk to you. It's us, the dragonettes. From the prophecy. Well, the two nightwing options. Starfleet at Amended. Hello, Fate Speaker said. Ugh. Nothing. Fate Speaker knocked and kicked the wall a few times, but there was no response. That is so frustrating, she growled. Your Majesty, I'm not impressed. It is the middle of the night. Starflight pointed out. She's probably, she's probably not even there. 
she must sleep somewhere. Face Baker hunched her wings, then sighed, then sighed and nodded. Alright, we'll sneak away from the Morris here and try it again and try again tomorrow. Starflight did not love the sound of the plan, but she already knew that then she already knew better than to try arguing with Jade Speaker. They turned to go and bust them, Starflight heard a noise. A noise like scraping coming from behind the wall. He looked at Faith Speaker and saw that she'd heard it too. They both returned to the screen. Your Majesty, Faith Speaker said. When there was still no answer, Starflight said, If she's back there, she doesn't want to talk to us. Faith Speaker, Speaker folded her wings in close and scowled. Then we should make we should make her see us. She started facing along with the wall of the green. There must be a door here somewhere. She has to get in and out somehow, right? Unless she is always in the same room, Starflight said. His mantle of the fortress started clicking together. I think I think the room behind this was all overlooked the council chamber. Maybe that's where she lives. Wait, 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 wait. I'm getting sleepy again. Wait. I need to, I need to stand up with uh, I'm gonna drink more water wait wait guys I need to self redeem self hydrate Hydrating. It's not like Zane is spamming ghost hydrate redeems. <laughs> I'm going to find where I stopped actually. Okay, we're, we are reading the next uh, page. So we just have to find a way into it, Faith Speaker said, charging into the hallway. Is that a good idea? Starflight asked. His claws caught on the rocks as he heard behind her. I'm pretty sure she won't be pleased. Too bad, Faith Speaker cried. We're her subjects too. She has to listen to us. Clearly, Faith Speaker didn't know very much about queens or tribes and how they worked. Perhaps the Talents of Peace camp was a little more open to input from all dragons. Or perhaps Faith Speaker would have been like this no matter where she was raised. She stopped abruptly, frowning and tipping her head from side to side. How do we get there? She muttered to herself. She closed her eyes and took a deep breath. Having a vision? Starflight asked. Recognize, recognizing the expression on her face. Trying to, she said, but all I can see is walls. <sighs> Let's try this way, Starflight suggested. They followed. They followed winding passages that seemed to be circling the council room, but you couldn't find any doors that might lead to the place where the queen had been hidden. But he did find one room with the door open and it was empty. When he peered inside, it was a strange room too. The space was dominated by a giant map on the wall, Puria, but with more detail in it than he'd ever seen on any map before. Every inlet, every joint was drawn with scientific precision. Even the rainforest sparkled with information. The location of the main rainwing village, all the rivers, 
and streams that crisscrossed the jungle and the two tunnels that led to the kingdom of Sun and the Nightwing Island. It was each was marked and carefully labeled. Labeled. Starfront noticed that the Sea Wings Summer Palace was noted on there as well, in ink that looked darker and newer than some of the other marks, and he wondered whether the Nightwings had only learned of its location when it burned. The Deep Palace was not on there. Still, a Sea Wings secret apparently. Yeah. But strongest of all, the map was covered with tiny squares. That were each labeled scavenger den. There were seven of them, from the outer ideal of the kingdom of the sea to the peninsula below the kingdom of the sun. There were there was even more. Oh wait, where, where, where was that? Oh, okay. there was even um. There was even one among the snowy waste of the Ice Kingdom, and each one had a careful, deliberate slash X slashed across it in the green ink. What are they doing? Starfight thought, staring at the map. Why tax scavengers? What do the X mean? What's a scavenger then? Facebooker asked from behind him. Have you ever seen a scavenger? Starfight asked. She shook her head. There are these little creatures with hardly any fur and they run around with two legs and they love to steal treasure. Kind of like magpies or raccoons but bigger. And sometimes they got they get pointy sticks and book dragons with them, which means they can be very intelligent. Wait, wait, wait. Guys, I'm gonna do something really quick, okay? Wait, be right back.
Okay, okay, okay. I'm back, I'm back. I just needed to do some lunges. <sighs> okay, let's go. Let's go, let's go. We, I think we stopped in the third paragraph, so I'm going to read again. If I, if I read it, I can't remember, but let me read the third paragraph again. Okay. But strangest of all, the map was covered with tiny squares that were each labeled Scavenger Den. There were seven of them, from the outer islands of the Kingdom of the Sea to the peninsula below the Kingdom of Sand. There was even one among the snowy waste of the Ice Kingdom, and each one had a careful deliberate X slashed across it in green ink. What are they doing? Starflight thought, staring at the map. Why track scavengers? What do the X's mean? What's a scavenger then? Fate Speaker asked from behind him. Have you ever been a scavenger? Starflight asked. She shook her head. There are these little creatures with hardly any fur, and they run around on two legs, and they love to steal treasure. Kind of like magpies or raccoons, but bigger. And sometimes they get pointy sticks and poke dragons with them, which means they can't be very intelligent. Oh, Fate Speaker said. Right, like the scavenger who killed Queen Oasis and started the whole war in the first place. Exactly, Starfight said. He shivered, remembering the only ones he'd ever encountered. The two who tried to kill him in Scarlet's arena. In his nightmares, they always stared at him with big, dragon-like eyes, and even though he found them terrifying, he couldn't help thinking, they're in the same situation I am. They're just trying to survive this arena. So this dance, that's where they live? Face speaker reached up and traced the outline of one of the dens with her claw. I guess so, Starfight said. I've never seen one. I always imagined warrants of tunnels. The scrolls say like The scrolls say they like to live in big groups, like meerkats, but they try to keep their dens hidden. According to what I've read, they're safer from predators that way. Predators like us, Fate Speaker said cheerfully. I have no idea what the Nightwings would care about them, Starflight said. Scratching his head, a theory was bubbling at the back of his mind, but before he could put it together, Fate Speaker slid her talons along to the outer edge of the map and let out a yelp. Look, there's something behind here! She unpinned one corner of the map and lifted it up, and sure enough, there was a small tunnel be hidden behind it. Let's go! She whispered, ducking into it with no hesitation. Starflight's heart was trying to clamber up his throat and strangle him, but what else could he do if this tunnel led where it looked like it might? He couldn't leave Fate Speaker to face Queen Battle Winner alone. If only Tsunami were here, or Clay, they'd at least be some use in a fight unlike him. His claws shook as he lifted the corner of the map and slid into the dark tunnel behind Fate Speaker. I am having a vision, Fate Speaker whispered dramatically in his ear, nearly making him leap out of his skills. Of us standing in front of Queen Battle Winner, this is going to work. You scared me half to death, he said, clutching his chest. Sorry, she said, and even in the dark, he could sense her grinning. So, he whispered, as they started creeping forward. In your visions, there is a Queen Battle Winner. She's alive? She exists? Of course. Fate Speaker said, What? Nothing, Starflight said. It's just, I've been wondering, since no one ever sees her, and apparently no one ever hears her except greatness, well, if she were dead, this would be a pretty clever plan, is all. As long as greatness claims Battle Winner is alive, she can issue orders and do all the things a queen might do. 
in battle winner's name, but no one can challenge her to try to take the throne. That is way sneaky. Fate speaker said, I would never have thought of that. I could be wrong. His nose bumped suddenly into stone. He stood up on his back talons and poked the low ceiling above their heads. Then, breathed out a plump of fire. The tunnel ended at a large boulder right in front of them. Fate speaker hissed, No way! This has to be it! Starflight gingerly felt around to the back of the boulder and realized there was empty space under his claws. The tunnel keeps going, only smaller, I think, he said. There was a hole in the wall hidden by the boulder, barely big enough for a dragon to fit through. He reached through talons inside and guessed that the hidden tunnel led up in the right direction. Ooh, Fate speaker said. Sniffing at the darkness, I foresee that this is going to be mad scary. You go first. It felt like a volcano was about to explode out of Starflight's chest. Well, if anyone does catch us, they can't kill both of us. They need at least one of us alive. He didn't find that, though. Very reassuring as he climbed into the dark tunnel and felt sharp black rocks digging into his talons. The only thing that was all comforting was the sound of Fate's speaker clamoring behind him, close enough to step on his tail a few times. The tunnel sloped up and around in a kind of spiral, when a last twist suddenly left them standing in an open cave. They were both caught by surprise. Starflight froze and Fate Speaker blundered into him. This is it! On one wall, the circle shape punctured with holes, looking out over the council chamber. On another wall, the screen that faced the throne room, and then there's a, and there was a third wall with only a few carefully hidden eye holes for spying on something or someone or somewhere without being noticed. But no queen. There were no dragons here. No signs of life. Where else could she be? Or am I right? Is she dead after all? In the center of the cave was an enormous cauldron full of lava, big enough for two more years. It looked like a jagged black bowl that had been yanked and pummeled out of the volcanic stone. Molten lava filled it to the brim bubbling and spitting gurglingly with weirdly. A few drops splattered A few drops spattered over the side and Starflight took a cautious step back, remembering the sticking burn on his foot. The room was stiffingly hot, almost painfully so. Starflight stayed around the cauldron, hugging the walls to peer through the secret eye holes across from the tunnel entrance. Facebooker followed him, uncharacteristically quiet. Starflight didn't recognize the room on the other side of the third wall, but he couldn't see but he could see a low table and the leftover bones of prey were strewn around the floor. I bet this is where the council members eat, he said pointedly to Fate Speaker. It's a good time to spy on dragons. When they might say anything if they don't realize she's watching. He glanced at the other two screens and shook his head. Then again, it looks like she's not doing much watching right now. He leaned into peer through at the dining cave again. Maybe you're right about Kate Speaker started then cut herself off with a cry of terror and see Starflight's shoulder at the same time. Touching him so hard, he thought she might draw blood. Oh, what? He began, then turned, so... He began, then turned, and saw what she saw. A dragon was rising up out of the lava. I'm, I'm gonna self hydrate first. self hydrate self hydrate
Nyam, 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 nyam. Okay, time to continue. I just hydrated. I just hydrated. <laughs> Thank you for redeeming it, love. <laughs> but I just finished drinking. Nor. <laughs> okay, fine. I'm gonna drink again. <laughs> Good God. At least the water is iced. Iced, iced, baby. <laughs> oh boy. I'm, I'm, I'm continue. We're already on chapter 16. Two more chapters and then we'll end stream. We'll raid someone. Starfelt had been terrified plenty of times. Since leaving the caves where he grew up, he thought nothing could ever be worse than the moment Queen Scarlet walked in with her guards, killed Dune, and took all the Dragonets prisoner. <coughs> oh my shit, what the fuck? Uh, uh, Raptor Roar, hello, just hot wasabi, welcome. Welcome to the stream, thank you for following me. Welcome, welcome, welcome in. Let me introduce myself. <laughs> Let me introduce myself. Hello, hello. Hello, just hot wasabi. Thank you, thank you. My name is Kira Honda. You're a local paleontologist, Saki Bus Fox, or in short, Saki Fox VTuber. Hello. How are you? How, how did you find me? How are you doing? Right now, I'm just reading my book, and yeah, I, um, on the stream's title, we we're just reading chapter 13 to 18. Chapters 13 to 18, we're already in chapter 16, so we have two more. Oh, shameless plug. Oh, what do you mean? Where, 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 oh, okay, wait, wait, where was that? <laughs> ah, okay, so Barrio, oh, right, <laughs> hi, hi, welcome in, welcome in, welcome in, hello, hello, Rago po shout out naman si, ano, si Hot Wasabi, thank you. Please give him a shout out. Thank you, love. Okay. Let's continue. <laughs> but yes, thank you again, Just Hat Wasabi, for uh, following me. She's <laughs> like, I'm talaga ako sa rapper that actually um, woke me up. <laughs> Let me uh, um, re read the first line again. Starfleet had been terrified plenty of times since leaving the caves where he grew up. He thought nothing could ever be worse than the moment Queen Scarlet walked in with her guards, killed June, and took all the Dragonets prisoner. But then, there was the moment he stood in her arena, knowing that she intended for him to be violently dead by the end of the day. That was followed by the moment Queen Coral had them thrown in her prison. Tsunami plunged through the electric eels. The sky wing attacked by the summer palace. Their frantic escape right through the middle of the battle. And perhaps the actual worst when Sunny had disappeared right in front of him in the rainforest. Not to mention all the scary things he'd faced since being abducted by the night wings. In fact, it spent most of the last few weeks in a state of near constant terror. This was a whole other level. A level of that's not scientifically possible and has it been under the level this whole time? And that's not possible! And now this is really it and there's no one to protect me and I'm definitely absolutely 
100% going to die because that is a dragon who lives in lava. Its head and wings came first in a fountain of golden molten lava and then a set of claws shot out and clutched the side of the cauldron. The dragon shook itself, sending splatters of lava flying. Slowly the lava poured off her head, revealing a thick set neck, a bottle scarred snout, and black scales that gleamed like polished ebony against the orange yellow pool around her. Starflight, 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 Fate Speaker whispered in a panic rush, shaking his arm violently. Do something! Like what? He whispered back. The tunnel was on the far side of the cauldron. They'd have to get past the dragon and the level she was dripping everywhere if they wanted to run away. Which was what he really, really wanted to do. Hiss! The dragon in the lava leaned forward and glared at them. Buzzing white steam seemed to be rising from her scales. Her tongue flicked in and out as she studied the two dragonets, and Starflight realized that there was a glint of icy blue in the depths of her dark eyes. When she opened her mouth, he spotted two teeth that were the same shade of blue looking more like icicles than regular teeth. Oh, hello, Kuya Kyle! Hello! Wait, 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 wait! Mukhang busy ata si Rago, ah. Wait, nagbigay ko ng shoutout si... Pato Sabi, tsaka si Kuya Kyle. Hello, Kuya Kyle! Big brother! Yes, Pato Sabi. Tapos, SO ko din si Kuya Kyle. So at Kalman, Big Brother, how are you? Long time no chat. How are you? Hello, hello. Ayon. Peto ngan. I am just reading a book that I actually bought in Holy Book. So yes, 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 yes. Two more chapters and we're done. Sheesh! Dumalo si Kuya Kyle! Sheesh! Sheesh above! Who? She rasped suddenly. Her voice was hard to hear. Creaky and quiet and rough and eerie, like claws. Scraping on ice several caves away. No, 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 no one? Starfight stammered. Please don't kill us! Fate speaker squeaked. Don't make me, said the lava dragon. She hissed again, her claws flexing around the edge of the cauldron. How? How did we find you? Starfight filled in. We were looking for the queen. Queen battle winner. I, said the dragon. Her eyes narrowed. You were... Where the dragoness of the prophecy, Fate Speaker said. I'm Fate Speaker, and this is Starflight. Ah, the queen sank lower in the lava. Hmm, unimpressive. How is this happening? Starflight burst out. Why aren't you dead? The temperature you're immersed in, the boiling point. The physical reaction of lava and scales. I saw what happened to vengeance. You can't be swimming in lava. It just isn't possible. Even dragons born from blood red eggs like clay could probably only withstand that kind of heat for a minute or two. And as far as I know, nightwings don't have eggs like that anyway. So, this can't be happening. Scientifically speaking, the queen let out a small Possibly a mist snort, blowing bubbles across the surface of the lava. Mastermind, son, she rasped. She studied him for a moment, then leaned toward, then leaned forward, opening her jaws as wide as they would go. Oh, the dragon is a female. Ayo. Okay. For a moment, Starfire thought she was about to lunge out 
of a cauldron and bite their heads off. But then, he realized from her odd position that she was actually holding herself so he could look inside her mouth. His fear slowly started to fade as curiosity took over and he stepped closer. Starflight! Fates! Fates speaker whispered anxiously. This wasn't in any of my visions. I'm really not sure about this. Three moons, he said, his eyes widening. Fate speaker, look! You can see right down her throat. And it's blue. The walls of Battle Winner's throat were lined with what looked like pale blue frost. Small swirling patterns that were feathery feathery or sharp and all glinted oddly. What is it? Starflight met Battle Winner's eyes again. She stopped her mouth shut. Eyes. The creak of her voice seemed to rattle her to her wingtips. She took a deep breath, dipped her, her, whole, dipped her whole head in the lava, and emerged again. Eyes? Starflight echoed. His mind whirled into gear trying to solve this mystery. Was it connected to the Nightwing? Bacteria that killed the prey? Or had she just swallowed a lot of ice to combat the lava? That made no sense. Where would the dragons even get ice here on the island where it was perpetually too warm? Queen Battle Winner was watching him as if there was a test and she had decided to save her breath and see if he could figure it out. Her breath. Ice wings! Starfleet burst out. The weapon! The frost breath! Battle Winner nodded. Her heavy shoulders slided up out of the lava and back down again. Her black tongue flicked in and out. Ah, her black tongue flicked in and out again, and this time he saw it. He saw that it also had a layer of thin shimmering frost on it. You got blasted by an ice wing, he said slowly. You must have been on the continent when you ran into one. Is that it? And you fought, and it hit you, but not on the outside. Maybe your mouth was open and it went right in and down your throat to freeze your insides, which means you should have been dead within a day. The queen flicked her wings back, scattering sizzling orange droplets around. Not so easy, she growled. To kill you, Starfleet finished. You made it back here. And the lava? The lava stops the effects of the freezing? Is that it? Indeed, the queen hissed again. A balance. But how? Fate speaker said. I mean, how did you know the lava wouldn't just kill you right away? Starflight could imagine it clearly. Battle winner on the continent, perhaps looking for a new home for the Nightwings, running into an ice wing and nearly dying in battle. But she staggered back through that long, awful fight to the island, feeling colder and colder and closer to death by the minute. The fire that burned inside fire-breathing dragons like Nightwings and Skywings would have been working against the ice to keep her alive for a while, but it wouldn't be enough to save her. By the time she'd made it to the island, she would have been shivering violently and feeling terribly sick as her stomach and intestines began to freeze and fuse together, spreading the icy plague out from her organs toward her skills. At that point, she could imagine she felt so cold that diving into lava sounded better than anything, even if it killed her, and maybe she expected it to. It couldn't be worse than what she was already feeling. And instead, it saved her life. Queen Battle Winner was alive, but the frost breath was still inside her. She could never leave the lava or else it would finish its work. The rest was details, although he was still curious about all of it. Like who knew her secret besides greatness, how this room had been built, and the screens put in how the cauldron had been filled with the lava and prepared for her. He wondered if she could still eat or if she existed in kind of a suspended state 
right on the edge of death. The queen was watching him closely, perhaps reading his mind as he put all the pieces together. He guessed that speaking was painful, scraping and cracking the eyes in her throat and possibly and mouth, and that was why she did as little of it as she possibly could. I'm sorry, he said to her finally. It seems like an awful thing. What, what's happened to you? Battle winner's head spikes flattened and her snout lifted. No pity. She snarled. Revenge soon. That sounded ominous, but worrying about ice wings would have to wait. Starflight reached out and took one of Fate Speaker's dials in his. We wanted to talk to you about the prophecy, he said hesitantly. We're afraid Morus here is being too cruel and interfering too much. What? The queen cut him off with a barking laugh and then doubled over in pain. Touching her neck, after a moment, she recovered enough to glare at him. Do as he says. She hissed. The prophecy is everything, but he sends Squid away to die today, Fate Speaker pleaded. And he says he's going to kill me or Starflight, and the Rainwing prisoners are being treated so terribly. Please, it doesn't have to be like this, does it? Anything to save the tribe, said the Queen. She began to sink down into the lava. Leave now! Wait, please! cried Fate Speaker, but Lava was already closing over the dark dragon's head. She was gone. They had failed. What? Hello, Odin Vine. Thank you for the uh, thank you for the poster check redeem. Thank you, thank you. Welcome to the stream. Thank you, thank you. You must be new to the stream. Looks like you're near. You're new here. <laughs> You're near here. What the hell? What the hell am I saying? Hello, Odin Bain. Odin Bain? Is that how I pronounce your name? Odin Bain? Welcome to the stream. Welcome in. Thank you for the poster check. So, we're down to last two chapters 17 and 18. Sheesh. Okay. Chapter 17. Why, why did I press my space bar? Goodness lord. Let me just um, uh, hide it, uh, self hide it myself again. Wait a minute, chat. Wait. Starflight trudged back to the dormitory in weary silence. He hoped against hope that dawn was farther away than Deathbringer had said. But he said, uh, but he had a feeling Morosir would be breathing angry, heat into his face within a horribly short spell of time. Poor squid, Fate Speaker said, pausing outside the dormitory entrance. I guess now we'll have to work with your seawing instead. She sighed and headed back to her sleeping spot. Chills rippled through starfire scales like the clouds blowing outside the sky flight. Tsunami. That was who he had to warn. Morosir had said, We have another seawing. We just have to retrieve her from the rainforest. Had they gone after her already? Had they tried? Was she alright? I can warn her if it's not too late. He hurried to his bed and scrambled uh, and scrabbled among the rocks until he found the tiny hole where he'd stashed the dream visitor. This time he'd find someone in the rainforest who would listen to him. He had to. He pulled the blanket over himself and cupped the jewel in his talons, then pressed it 
to his head. Tsunami, please be there. Tsunami. As always, his first thought was, so was of Sunny. And then, the others flashed through his head. Tsunami, play, glory. And then he was falling. Suddenly, through a bright, cloudless blue sky, he snapped his wings open, catching a rising wind, and looked up. Above him, glimmering in the sun, were five shapes he recognized Sunny immediately. Her golden skills couldn't be mistaken for anyone else. She was playing a looping game of chase with clay. Her quick agility outmaneuvering his giant wings, both of them laughing. Tsunami and Glory circled them, calling out suggestions. Glory's wings were dark purple, and she wore a small woven crown of iridescent ruby red flowers. And there was Starflight himself flying along with the others and smiling like nothing could ever be wrong. He looked different here. Bigger, kinder, warmer, somehow. In fact, they all did. Tsunami and Glory rarely smiled so much in real life. Clay was almost never this fast or graceful. Who dreams this? He wondered, but it wasn't hard to guess. Sun darted away from the others like a dragonfly and like a, like a dragonfly and dropped toward him, beaming. Two of you in one dream, she said happily. How weird is that? She fitted around him, brushed her wings against his, and then zipped back up to tug on Clay's tail. He couldn't bring himself to speak. Being near her, it all came rushing back. How? He'd loved her his whole life and how impossible the whole thing was, not least because they were from different tribes. If he could make himself talk, if he could warn her about Tsunami, maybe she would listen. But the blue sky was abruptly swallowed in darkness and he was falling again until he was surrounded by bubbles and cool green light underwater. This must be Tsunami's dream. He waved his wings and spun slowly in the water. Sure enough, there she was, with her claws wrapped around the neck of a skeletal green dragon. Oh. Gil, Starfleet remembered, her father, the one she killed in the arena before she knew who he was. This, man, this was a nightmare. Her face was twisted in despair, she'd never hear him like this. Her little sister, Anemone, came swimming up and see and seeing her, Tsunami suddenly released the old dragon. He fell back, his jaws opening and closed pitifully. Tsunami turned to Anemone with her talons outstretched like she was apologizing. But then Anemone's eyes narrowed and she lunged toward Gil. Seizing his throat herself, her tail smacked Tsunami aside as her tail sank into his neck. Thick blood bubbled out, staining the water. Tsunami grabbed Anemone and tried to pull her away, but it was too late. Bakit ako Or am I getting hungry, bro? The fuck? Starfleet closed his eyes, understood what Tsunami was worrying about. The anem that anyone would turn evil if she used her animus powers and that there were nothing Tsunami could do to save her. Just one more reason why we have to stop this war. If there was no war, there would be no one trying to force Anemone into using her powers. She'd be safe. Crunch, 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 crunch. Starfleet opened his eyes. He was seated. He was sitting in a vast dry cave with torches flickering along the walls. The floor was nearly covered with all kinds of prey. Boar, chickens, a cow, several ducks, two deer, and a hippo. Some of them were still alive, wandering around, bumping into walls, oblivious to the two dragons in the cave with them. The other dragons was Clay, who sat with his tail curled around his neck, talons, happily munching on something charred. 
Oh, hey, Starflight, he said, as if it were perfectly natural for his friends to suddenly pop into his dreams. Hello, Kuya Rolf! Welcome to the stream! Hello, hello! Let me give you a shout out. Hello, Kuya Rolf! Hello, Kuya Rolf! Hello, hello! Welcome to the stream! Welcome in po! Tumpi! How's you, Kuya Rolf? Of course, you are welcome, po. You are welcome. I am just finishing chapters 13 until 18 right now. Nasa chapter 17 po tayo. And again, um, if anyone here doesn't have an audible book or an audio book, you've come to the right place. I'm getting sleepy, but yes, let's continue reading. If you don't have any audibles, I can read a story just for you. Hmm. Nasaan na ako? Ayan. Ugh. Oh, hey, Starflight, he said, as if it were perfectly natural for his best, for his friends, to suddenly pop into his dreams. Clay! Starflight cried, you can see me! Clay blinked a few times. Should I not be able to see you? This isn't just a dream, Starflight said quickly. I'm really here. I mean, I'm really talking to you. Of course you're really talking to me, Clay said cheerfully. Hungry? There's a great freezer around here somewhere. He looked around, scratching his head. Oh, uh, I think I already ate it. Sorry. Starflight was hungry. Ano ba, Starflight? Pinapagutom mo naman ako. Gusto ko lang kumain. <laughs> My god. I wanna eat! Damn you, Starflight. Anyways, Starflight was hungry, but he knew dream food wouldn't do him any good. Clay, listen to me. I'm missing a dream visitor. I'm talking to you from the Nightwing Kingdom. Very cool! Clay said in an agreeable voice. How about a pig? No wait, I ate that too. I'm serious, Starflight said, lashing his tail. Don't you remember learning about dream visitors? There are these ancient sapphires that your animals touched generations ago. I found one and I'm using it to visit your dream and tell you something really important. Clay's forehead was scrunched in a puzzled way. Sure, Starflight. I have dreams about you lecturing me all the time. That stopped Starflight for a moment. You do? Cl Clay drew himself up and adopted a stuffy, scolding voice. Weren't you listening? Didn't you read the scrolls? That was before the scalding. Everyone knows that. The scorching, Starflight corrected automatically, and I do not sound like that. Sure, Clay said. Anyway, Hippo? Starflight stamped one foot. Fine, but just listen! Tsunami is in danger. Moro's here and the Nightwings are coming after her. Will you tell her that? Look! Clay said delightedly. My brothers and sisters! He jumped up and hurried to the cave entrance, where a small band of Mudwings were coming in. The smallest Dragonette jumped up to hug Clay's big neck. And the largest one inclined his head with a friendly smile. Starflight hadn't met Clay's siblings, but he'd heard about Clay's encounter with them in the Mudwing village. They were all soldiers now in the Great War, fighting under Queen Murhen on Burn's side. Even though they weren't full grown yet, one of them had died in the battle already. No. More dragons we need to save, he thought anxiety and feared turning his scales cold. He wasn't sure Clay had really listened to him. He had to keep trying. Glory, he thought, closing his eyes. 
the sound of paper rustling let him know that he was somewhere new right before he opened them again. Joy sat at a low table in one of the treetop haunts in the rainforest, studying a scroll in her own dream. She wasn't wearing a crown and she looked more tired than anything else. Her scales were dark green and dappled with light matching the leaves around her. The furry shape of her sloth curled around her neck. Glory, Starfight said, his voice breaking. Would she listen to him? He remembered what he'd heard Sun say and the last time he'd used the dream visitor. If Glory thought he was a traitor, she wouldn't have any reason to believe in anything he said. The new queen of rain of the rain wings slowly raised her head and met his eyes. They stared at each other for a long moment, her green eyes searching for something in his face. Wow, she said. He found a dream visitor. He exhaled, feeling relief flood through his skills. Of course, she remembered learning about them. He'd always wished he could remember things as easily as she did instead of having to study so hard all the time. I didn't run off, she said in a rush. The nightwings took me. I swear, Glory, I would never have left you at all. Morrow's here is, test is testing me to see if I'm worthy of the prophecy. He has this all other dragon nuts that he wants to use instead. Only he needs a sea wing now. So Tsunami in danger and I had to warn you. Stop, stop, Glory said, rolling up her scroll and leading on the table. Tell me everything. So he did from the moment. He was abducted to the terrifying encounter with the Nightwing, Nightwing Queen. At first, he had that sinking sensation in his stomach, worrying that he was betraying someone. This time, he thrived, but he thought that he thought of Orchid clapped to the wall. The sky was burning in sky. And sorry, and squid flying slowly away to his death, and he squashed any guilt he felt. He was sure now would deserve his loyalty. So, be careful. He finished. I'm worried about Tsunami. Please tell her to be careful. Gory, Gory laughed. Oh, sure. And you tell Clay to stop being hungry. Starfleet felt a small trying, trying to struggle onto his face. He really does dream about food. It turns out, he said, likely, uh, like lots and lots of food. Uh, wait, nagugutom ako. Ano ba yan? <laughs> Why am I hungry? Ito kasi yung story na to eh. Chat, can I get something to nap on first? I'm actually hungry. I'm be right back muna ah. Nagugutom ko sila ko. I, I, I'm hungry as fuck. I'm gonna come back after. Wait, be right back.
I'm done eating. Okay. <laughs> Nakakainis naman kasi itong story na to eh. Pinaghutom pa kasi ako eh. We said... Pinaghutom pa talaga ako. Sige. Oh shit, it's raining. Cats and dogs outside. Stay safe guys. Stay safe. Sige. We'll continue reading. Stop! Stop! Glory said, pulling up her scroll and leaning on the table. Tell me everything. So he did. From the moment he was abducted through the terrifying encounter with the Nightwing Queen, at first he was, at first he had that sinking sensation in his stomach again, worrying that he was betraying someone. This time, his tribe. But then he thought of Orchid clamped the wall, the sky wings burning and Squid flying slowly away to his death. And he squashed any guilt he felt. He was sure now who deserved his loyalty. So, he finished. I'm worried about Tsunami. Please tell her to be careful. Glory laughed. Oh sure, you could. You you tell me. Oh sure, you you tell Clay to stop being hungry. Starflight felt a small, a smile trying to struggle onto his face. He really does dream about food. It turns out, he said. Like lots and lots of food. Oh, Clay, Glory said affectionately. Well, apparently I dream about homework even though there aren't any scrolls in the rainforest. She waved her talons at the dream table in front of her, and then her face turned serious again. I'll talk to Tsunami and put some guards on her, but I'm more worried about you we're not ready to attack yet but if you're in danger she cut a lion in the table with one of her claws i mean it sounds like moro's here might kill you at any moment she looked out the window where glimmers of rainbow wings were visible in the trees around them but my tribe they're not ready if i take them through today they'll be slaughtered i understand starflight said Glory was a queen now. She had to think about protecting her tribe as much as taking care of her friends. Every single bit of him wanted to yell, Forget the rain wings! Please rescue me! Come as you come as soon as you can. But it was too easy for him to imagine everything Glory was thinking. All the information she had to take into account the pros and cons and best battle strategies and unacceptable losses and collateral damage all the things they'd studied as distant theories but never had to deal with themselves oh my goodness thank you for the 100 bits thank you thank you for the 100 bits sarah Kaya, kaya ako naging paleontologist na VTuber eh, para gulatin ako ng Spinosaurus. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, now I'm, I'm, I'm fucking awake. I'm fucking awake, Sarah. <laughs> Nagulat ka din eh. Ako din eh. Ako din eh. Nagulat na ako sa ano sa Spinosaurus. <laughs> Kakatapos lang ng meeting ko and I was about to sleep din. Eh. <laughs> Ayan kasi eh. Ayan kasi eh. <laughs> Tapos nagulat ka sa Spinosaurus. <laughs> Good, you're sometimes bad, Sarah. <laughs> but thank you for the 100 bits. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, good Lord. <laughs> Breathe it. <laughs> so instead, she said, I will write. I'll take care of myself until you get here. Gloria looked back at him, tilting her head to the side. Warm pink suffused with purple spread along the edges of her wings. Wait, is it suffused or suffused? I don't know. <laughs> how, how do you pronounce this? Suffused? Suffused? I don't know. How do you, pr how do you pronounce this? Suffused. Wait, where is that word? Suffused. Is it suffused or suffused? I don't know. Well, I will go rest and good luck. Sustain. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, thank you. Rest well. Thank you. Also, after Sarah rest, how do you how do you pronounce the word chat? Is it suffused or suffused? Good lord. Suffused. Suffused. I don't know. So. Suffused. Suffused. Or. Suffused. How, how, how do you. How do you pronounce that? Uh, no, 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 no. That's 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 not how it goes, Sarah. That's not how it goes. It's not pronounced as sucky fox. Come on, stop trolling with me. <laughs> for real, though, for real. Is it suffus or suffus? <laughs> <laughs> Good God. Anyways. Starflight, I think that might be the bravest thing you've ever said. He ducked his head looking down at the stallions. Well, he added, you know, don't take too long. She laughed again and he felt a fierce awful longing to be back with his friends. Where even if everything wasn't easy, at least he felt like he meant something to somebody. Something more than a line in the prophecy. Hello, Sevi! Hello, hello! Welcome to the stream! Let me give you a shout out, shout out, out Sevi! Let's go! Hi! Hello, Sevi! How are you, Sevi? I miss you, Sevi! I miss you! I am just reading a book that I bought in a bookshop. I forgot when I bought this, but yeah, this um, this book is called Wings of Fire, and yep, um, what's this? I'm going to give you a rundown of 
how the dragon's description are after I read chapter 17. Is that it with you? Is that okay with you? Oh shit, where did I stop? Honor. I forgot where I stopped. She got me. Let me look where I stopped. Let me see if I can get on top of the name. And the first answer. Okay, I think I stopped here. I, I can't remember. Okay, I'll, I'll just. You know what? Whatever. I'm, I'm going to read from, from this part. <laughs> um. Not. Not that much, but since I bought this book, I think it's it's um it's kind of interesting to re read it on stream. How many chap? I think it has like twenty seven chapters. <laughs> um. Uh. Uh. Wait. How many chapters is this? I'm so like far away. What is the last chapter? Whoa, 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 wait, 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 wait. It has 28 chapters. Good lord. Sheesh. Okay. I'm going to give you a rundown of how the dragon's descriptions look like after I read chapter 17. Um, let's see. Uh. No, 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 no. Okay, what? Okay, okay. Girl looked back at him, tilting her head to the side. Warm pink, warm pink suffused with purple spread along the edges of her wings. Starflight, I think that might be the bravest thing you've ever said. He ducked his head, looking down at his talons. Well, he added, you know, don't take too long. She laughed again, and he felt a fierce, awful longing to be back with his friends, where even if everything wasn't easy, at least he felt like he meant something to somebody, something more than a line in a prophecy. Her face went serious and she toyed with the corner of one of the scrolls between her claws. So, death bringers in trouble for helping me, she said. I'm sure he understood the risk when he decided to set you free, Starfleet pointed out. I'm sure he understood. Ah, uh, no. Hmm. Gloria said skeptically. I'm sure he thought he could charm his way out of anything. Idiot. Well, he still might. Starflight said. I don't think greatness wants to execute himself. Glory shook her herself. Can you tell me anything else about the Night Wings? She asked. Anything that might help us when we do attack. Like, do they have mind readers? posted at the tunnel entrance. That's what I would do, so they could sense anyone coming through and maybe even read our battle plans before we got there. I want I want to send in a camouflage scout just to see how many guards are in the cave now. But that's why I haven't see but but that's why I haven't yet. I don't dare. I don't know, Starflight said. I'm sorry I don't know anything useful about what the Nightwings are doing. I bet you know more than you think, she said. Can you tell me more about the fortress, or the layout of the island, or how we might get there if we flew from the continent instead of using the tunnel? His heart sank. We'd have to get through Mudwing and Skywing territory first, he pointed out, before you could fly across the ocean to the island, even if I could find a way to describe their route. And that would take weeks, he thought. Weeks to travel the whole length of the continent? Can I survive for weeks on my own? Yeah, it's probably not the safest plan, Glory said thoughtfully. Starflight shifted his wings. He felt chilly air against his scales and it wasn't coming from Glory's rainforest dream. I think I have to go, he said in a panic whisper. It must also it must almost be done. 
All right, she said, standing up. But come back tomorrow night if you can. We can figure this out, Starflight. It's going to be all right. She stepped over the table and wrapped her wings around him, which didn't work very well since he wasn't really there. But somehow it was still comforting. See you soon, he said. Remember to watch out for Tsunami. Glory rolled her eyes. At this point, I bet most of my tribe would invite the Night Wings to abduct her. She's not the calmest general of Peria, I can tell you. Starfleet smiled and lifted the dream visitor to his forehead. The rainforest disappeared. He was back in the gloomy, dimly lit Nightwing dormitory. Had he heard a scrabble of claws right before he'd opened his eyes? Starfleet glanced around and realized that his blankets had shifted so he wasn't as well hidden anymore. Or someone moved them. His talons with the glowing sapphire trapped between them were visible. He pulled them back close to his chest then leaned over the side of the bed to tuck the jewel into its hiding spot. Sleepy mutters indicated that the other dragonets were waking up. But when he looked around the room, he couldn't see anyone who looked awake yet. Did someone see the dream visitor? Was someone spying on me? Maybe I imagined it. But he couldn't shake the uneasy feeling that his secret might not be entirely safe anymore. Okay, um... Before we proceed to the last chapter for tonight, chapter 18, I'm going to do a recap for Sebi, um, the Wings of Fire. So th this right now, you see right now, Sebi is the book cover. This is the book cover of um, Wings of Fire. And I'll be showing you the other dragons. Um, let me see. Where's that? Okay. Got it, got it, got it, got it. So, this one, we have the sand wings. We have the sand wings. I'm going to give you a run through of these dragons. So, the sand wings. Description. Pale gold or white scales. The color of desert sand. Poisonous barbed tail. Four black tongues. Abilities can survive a long time without water. Poison enemies with the tips of their tails like scorpions. Bury themselves for camouflage and the desert sand breathe fire. Wait, where is that? Okay. Queen, since the death of Queen Oasis, the tribe is split between three rivals for the throne. Sisters burn, Blister and Blaze. Alliances. Burn fights alongside Sky Wings and Mud Wings. Vister is allied with the Sea Wings and Blaze has the support of most Sand Wings as well as an alliance with the Ice Wings. Hmm. Wait. Let me check my browser order if it's too loud. Okay, no, it's not too loud. That's good. Mud. And then next we have the Mud Wings. We have the Mud Wings. Description Thick armored brown scales, sometimes with amber and gold underscales, large flat heads with nostrils on top of the snout. Abilities can breathe fire if warm enough, hold their breath for up to an hour, blend into large mud puddles, usually very strong. Queen Queen Morhen Alliances currently allied with Bren and the Skywings in the Great War. Next, we have the Sky Wings. We have. Oh, wait. Oh, no. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, yeah, okay, that's, that's correct. After the Mud Wings, we have the Sky Wings. We have the Sky Wings. Description Red, Gold, or Orange Scales, Enormous Wings, uh, Abilities. Powerful fighters and flyers can breathe fire. Queen, Queen Scarlet. Alliances currently allied with Bryn and the Mud Wings in the Great War. Next, we have the Sea Wings. We have the Sea Wings. We have the Sea Wings. Description Blue or green or aquamarine scales. Webs between their claws, gills on their necks, 
grow in the dark stripes on their tails slash snouts slash on their bellies. Abilities can breathe underwater, see in the dark, create huge waves with one splash of their powerful tails, excellent swimmers. Queen, Queen Coral. Alliances, currently allied with Blister in the Great War. Next, we have the Ice Wings. Next, we have the Ice Wings. The Ice Wings. Description. Silvery scales like the moon or pale blue like ice. Ridged claws to grip the ice. Fort blue tongues. Tails narrow to a whipped thin end. Abilities can withstand, can withstand sub zero temperatures and bright light. Exhale a deadly freezing breath. breath. Sorry. Queen, Queen Glacier. Alliances. Currently allied with Blaze and most of the Sandwings in the Great War. Uh, next, we have the Rain Wings. We have the Rain Wings. Description Scales constantly shift colors, usually bright like Birds of Paradise. Prehensile tails. Abilities can camouflage their scales to blend into their surroundings. Use their prehensile tails for climbing. No known natural weapons. Queen. Queen Dazzling, alliances not involved in the Great War. And then lastly, we have the Night Wings. We have the Night Wings. Description, purplish black scales and scattered silver scales on the other side of their wings, like a night sky full of stars. Front black tongues. Abilities can breathe fire. Disappear into dark shadows. Read minds foretell the future. Queen, a closely guarded secret. Alliances, <clears throat> too mysterious and powerful to be part of the war. Okay. So, I have recapped to you the dragons and, and what their descriptions, abilities, queen, and alliances are. And now we'll proceed to the last chapter for tonight, which is chapter 18. <clears throat> I think we've reached the first half since it has um, 28 chapters we I think we reached the first half so yeah we'll go back to the, the book cover where's my book cover oh no there you go okay for chapter 18 we'll start Starfleet lay curled on top of the blanket, trying to calm his pounding heart. I've done what I had to do. I won glory. Now I must. Now I just have to wait until they rescue me. Survive until they get here. Surely I can do that. Oh! Snarled Moros here from the doorway. All the dragonets in the dormitory scrambled to their feet, neck spikes bristling. But Moros gaze was fixed on the prophecy dragonets who came forward to stand in front of him. Starflight noticed that Flame kept his head down so he didn't have to meet the Nightwing's eyes. Yesterday was stupendously unimpressive, Morosir growled. Starflight glanced over his shoulder and saw fierce teeth watching them with an alert expression. Next time you're in that kind of situation, the Nightwing went on. I want to be sure you can fight your way out of it, even without backup. So, today, battle training. Starflight's wings drooped. <clears throat> battle training was always his least favorite thing. Next time, Viper Snap. I'm not stupid enough to go through that again. Morosir hissed at her. If you would like to take yourself back to the Talons of Peace. Two, there's the door. He sucked his wing toward the outside. Viper hesitated, scowling. Then ducked her head and stopped arguing. My throat hurts, Flame said to Morosi without looking at him. There's water in the in the throat down there. Morosi waved at the other end of the dormitory. Touch up to us as fast as you can. The others followed Morosi out through the archway. A few mo a few moments later, Flame caught up, coughing and scratching his throat. Morosir led them out to the prison caves of the mountain. 
where a few rivers of lava flowed as swiftly as if they just erupted yesterday. The biggest was the one that ran in front of the renewing prison caves. They landed a few lengths away from it, and Starflight spotted guards in every cave mouth, bristling with armor and spear and alarm to the gongs. I should remember to tell Glory that tonight, he noted, looks like two guards for every Rainwing prisoner. He saw Morosier notice the direction of his gaze and hurriedly filled his mind with other thoughts. Aren't we a little close to the lava? Starflight asked, nodding at the golden orange liquid fire that flowed from the top of the mountain. Everywhere on this island is close to lava, Morosier growled. Let's begin with you two. He flicked his tail at Ochre and Flame. To Starflight's relief, time to kill each other and I'll step in and when I think it's necessary. Ochre regarded Flame dubiously. Try to kill each other? He said. With no breakfast? Flame flexed his claws. Fine by me. Any rules? There are no rules on the battlefield, Morris here pointed out. Flame immediately leaped at Ochre. His claws slashed across the Mudwing's nose, leaving a bleeding gash, and then he spun and kicked the Mudwing in the chest. Ow! Okra roared, lunging at a sky wing. They grappled on the dark, rocky ground, red and brown scales flashing and soon smeared with blood. With the lava river so close, there wasn't a lot of room to maneuver or get out of the way. At one point, a burst of fire from flame nearly singed Starflight's swing. And Oko stepped on Viper's foot, earning a ferocious hiss. Here! Trade Speaker grabbed Starflight and tugged him up onto a tall boulder. He sunk his claws into gaps, the rocks, nervously eyeing and eyeing the lava below. Even from up here, he could feel the heat blasting along his scales. His fear should have helped him help keep him awake, but he was a little dizzy with exhaustion. <coughs> And the heat made him drowsier. He rubbed his eyes, wondering what would happen if he fell asleep. He guessed he'd either tumble out of the boulder into the lava, or he'd wake up in Morosir's talons dangling over the volcano. He tried to pay attention to the moves that two dragonets were using, but unlike Clay and Tsunami, he could never figure out what was going on in a fight like this. Everyone was moving too fast. Okur suddenly burst into the air, winging in a circle around Flame, yelling, Stop it! I want to stop! Morrow's here snorted. An opponent on the battlefield wouldn't stop, just because you asked them to. He's bleeding pretty seriously, Fate Speaker pointed out, took up a cut on his wing. Hmm, Morrow's here said, studying Okur. Alright, Mudwing, you're out, and you're in. He seized Fate Speaker's shoulder and threw her toward Flame. The Skywing didn't wait to be told twice. He jumped forward and sank his teeth into her neck. Yo! Fate Speaker shrieked. She beat his head with her wings until he let go and fell back and then she clawed at the air in front of his face and darted away. Send me in too, Viper said to Morosir. I want to bite her. I can definitely kill her, just give me a chance. Go ahead and try, Morosir said, tilting his head at the small nightwing. Viper hissed with delight and he rushed forward with her tail, raised, just like a scorpion attacking. Trade speaker yelped with dismay and shot behind the boulder appearing around the other side as Viper chased her. That's not fair, Starflight cried. Trade speaker against both of them? Battles are never fair in real life. If she doesn't survive, well, we have you. Starfight clenched his talents watching the writhing ship below him as anxiously. Viper and Flame were both so angry. They hated being here, and he wouldn't be surprised if they took it out on Fate's, Fate's speaker. Flame shot a burst of fire at Fate's speaker's snout. She ducked and rolled away, barely escaping before Viper's poisonous tail stabbed into the ground beside her. 
If she's even scratched by Viper still, she could die. Starflight said to Morosir. Maybe not right away, but the infection. <clears throat> he dodged the wound Vister had given to Webs for days as it got worse and worse. Only a particular cactus from the Kingdom of Sun would reverse the effect. And there certainly wasn't any of it on this island. If you're so worried, jump in yourself. Morosir said he was studying the fight intently. Skywing as nobody ever taught you how to hold in your fire until its maximum temperature? Like this. He shot a bolt of flames over their heads, but the moon's face speaker stopped rolling around and used her claws. Starflight, help me! Fate speaker yelled. He had no choice. It was beyond terrifying to think of facing Viper's tail and flame's talons, but he couldn't leave her to fight alone. He knew what his friends would do. If they were here, Close, he closed his eyes, burst his legs, and vaulted off the boulder onto Flame's back. The skywing roared and twisted, sending Starflight tumbling across the black rocks. Sharp stone edges slashed his scales and the membranes of his wings. He struggled up, bleeding from several small cuts, and saw Viper knock with speaker to the ground <clears throat> and loom over with her tail. Race. Morosir watched his claws, tapping thoughtfully. Stop! Starfad cried, running at Viper. Leave her alone! This is your fault! Viper hissed at Fate Speaker. I could be back at trap with my parents if it weren't for your stupid tribe. Starfad smashed into Viper just as her tail jabbed down toward Fate Speaker's neck. A sharp smell of venom filled his nose and his head collided with one of her wings. As she staggered back, her tail flew out for balance and sliced neatly across Flame's face. Flame roared with agony, clawed frantically at his nut and slammed his body to forward into Viper's side. The force of the blow sent her reeling away. Starfront watched in horror as Viper teetered on the edge and then fell with an air-splitting shriek right into the, la in right into the lava river. No! Morosir's roared, leaping forward but he wasn't reaching for Viper. He seized Flame's head between his talons and glared at the wound she had inflicted. Skywing, don't move! Can you see? Flame's only response was a kneeing, guttural sound of agony. <clears throat> Viper! Fate Speaker cried. Starfleet followed her to the edge of the river, but the sandwing had vanished below the lava. Viper! Faker speaker, Fate speaker screamed. Through his horror, Starfleet's brain flashed him a message, and he rolled around. Ogre, you can go get her, he yelled. Maybe we can save her if you pulled her out right away. Ogre blinked slow, painfully dull eyes at him. What in the three months are you talking about? Your skills! Starfleet grabbed Ogre's forearm and tried to drag him toward the lava. The Mudwing sat down, firmly, as heavy as an entire fortress. Ogre, please! You have fireproof skills! You can go into the lava without getting hurt! You can fight her and drag her out! Please! Please, just try! Fireproof skills? Fate speaker said, because he was born from a red egg. Starflight said, like it says in the prophecy, and that means fireproof skills come on, why aren't you moving? Let go of me! Poker growled, planting all his limbs even more solidly on the ground. I have no idea if my egg was red or red, or whether my skills are fireproof, and I'm certainly not jumping into a pit of lava to find out. But... Starfleet protested, but if you were in the prophecy, if you could be the Mudwing, then you must have been born from a blood red egg, just like clay. His heart wasn't in it anymore. He turned to look back at the lava knowing it was already too late. Viper hadn't even come to the surface once, she was gone. Prophecy, Shemophacy, said Ochre. I wasn't hatched on the brightest night 
either. So I'm not going to base my life. I'm not going to base any life or death decisions on some old words in the scroll. Starfleet pivoted slowly to stare at the mudwing. You weren't hatched on the brightest, right? He echoed. Oh, what should? Neither was he. We had the same hatching day a few weeks before the brightest night. He nodded at Flame, who was curled on the ground, now still making that horrible sound of pain with his talons pressed to his face. Morrissey stood over him, lashing his tail fiercely. But Starfire's words failed him. Suddenly, everything seemed a lot clearer and yet confusing at the same time. The alternate dragons weren't real. They couldn't be the dragon that's in the prophecy. They were entirely false, an illusion of an illusion Moros was trying to create. The giant Nightwing wasn't just tinkering with fate. Hmm. Wait, the giant Nightwing wasn't just tinkering with fate. He was just trying to rewrite it. Okay. So so in other words, he was trying to rewrite it completely different. Hmm, I see, I see. Okay. Interesting. Okay, so that was it for chapter 18. We're going to continue chapter 19 and other chapters on later date. I don't know, I'm getting sleepy already. But wait, let me pull out my reading message and subread. Hmm. Let me just go to just chatting. It should be top slot. My lord. Okay. That's the ready message. And then the sub raid is here. This one. Oh wait, no no no. Let me pull out my sub raid in my server. It's in my Discord server. Let me just pull it real quick. Where's this raiding channel? There you go. Okay. I have no energy left. Chat. I need to rest. And then here's the sub raid. So, yep. Um, there you go. Okay. So, yep. Otsukira. Otsukira. Um, thank you for coming in to my stream for tonight i hope all of you guys enjoyed the story time reading even though i was so airheaded already good god um uh, <laughs> i i don't i don't even know if i'm reading the correct pages um, i think i'm reading it half asleep already i definitely need rest so yeah, um, let me see who we can actually raid for this morning. Uh, let me check. Oh, wait. Okay. You know what? I have a friend who's streaming Genshin Impact right now, and he has like, um, just one viewer. So, we can go raid that guy. His name is Shinikage. So yeah, we, we can decorate that. We can we can raid him. Shinikage. Shinikage, they're streaming Genshin Impact right now. So yeah. 
um, ya yeah, uh, also kira also kira thank you for coming to my stream again uh, this is your local paleontologist succubus fox or in short succubus fox vtuber kira honda and saying good night good morning good afternoon and i'll see you in the next stream which is probably tomorrow so yes yes um yes me guys thank you bye bye Thank you.